Hi, this is Mike from Horror Society. Is this Ellie? This is Ellie. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Happy Halloween. <laughs> you too. Woo! I uh, at least you're excited. Like that that was one of my first questions. I was like, "Do you ever get tired of it now like 25, 26 <laughs> years later or are you still like really gung-ho about the whole thing?" Um, gung-ho. Come on. How can I not be? It's a really, really cool franchise. Yes. Well, I mean, everything. Like, Halloween in general, the trick-or-treating, and yeah, the no, costume. Yeah, Halloween in general, I think it's really cool. I was just noting that um, people on the West Coast decorate more than they do on the East Coast. But, no, I think it's really festive. I think it's fun. It's, it's like the one day of the year where you can go bonkers. Yes. Um, Within reason. Yeah. Yes, but I, I mean, I don't know how things are like where you are, but in New Jersey, I feel like, because that's where I am, I feel like it's kind of not as big a deal anymore, so I feel like I'm the only... I know! I know! I'm feeling it, too, and it's so weird, because yes. it's such a fun thing, you know? Especially for kids. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And us as adults, apparently, like, we love it. <laughs> you know what, Michael, I think, um, I hope that, um... I hope that Halloween hasn't gotten too, like, that we haven't forgotten how fun it can be. You know what I mean? It's not just about, like, it's so fun to get scared and all that stuff in the creeps, but I think some of the later franchises have gotten so dark and danky. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you... Like, I, we shouldn't forget how, how just plain old fun it is, you know? No, not at all. I mean, we're still allowed to dress up at my other job, but we have to keep it kind of, like, PG-rated, and that, that sometimes it takes the fun out of it, but, you know. Yeah. Um, basically, I just had a couple questions about Halloween, and then, you know, the House of the Dead, uh, a little... Oh, no, shoot, um, I'm, I'm ready and willing. A little about Mind, uh, Mind Fire Entertainment, your company, and then I uh -huh. figured, figured we could just end it with talking about the play you said you're going to be starting tomorrow, I think. Perfect. Perfect. Um, the one, I have two questions about Halloween 4 and 5. The first one is, do you think your role as Rachel is actually more respected now, you know, 25, 26 years later, than when it was when the movies first came out? Um, I do, and I think part of the reason, at least my perspective, is that, um, you know, once Halloween 4 came and went, you know, it got, it got really, really good response because it was a good story. I thought Dwight Little did a fantastic job. We had Donald Pleasance. I mean, all the elements were in place for a great story, a great sequel. I think as it got farther and farther away from its original um, appeal of 1 and 2, um, I think the elements that really resonate kind of, um, rise to the surface. And I think people really got behind Danielle's character, and I think they really got behind my character. Um, so yes, to answer your question, I think it wasn't until after Rachel was killed that people were like, oh, no, you know, it's like, she was smart, she was, you know, uh, somewhat likable for, you know, I thought she was so real. I thought she was real likable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, you know, not stereotypical in the horror movies. It was, it was a lot. Um, I guess it was written very similarly to Jamie Lee Curtis's role, where it's not, you know, she's not the pretty, sexy, funny girl that gets the guys, but you know, you get behind her because she, she fought back. You know. She oh yeah. Tough. And speaking she of... Was, and she was smart. So yes, people always, always say, why did they do that? And I think even Mustafa Akkad, God love him, you know, um, years later they asked him during a panel we were on, you know, why did you do that to, to Rachel's character? And he said, I have no idea that the response is going to be so good, you know? Mm -hmm. That's what... Um... Part, of the, part of the formula, you know? I was talking to my friend, um, he's a comic book creator, Dennis Willman, and he he was like, can you ask her why they killed Rachel? And he 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 and I were both under the impression that, um, you know, the same way that Laurie Strode was killed off in Halloween Resurrection, kind of mirrored how Rachel was killed in Halloween 5. So... It was it was not your choice to get killed off. You didn't ask to be killed off. It was something that was I not, no, no, it wasn't. And it was so funny because when we knew Halloween Four did well and then I went 
waited for five to arrive at my door, and I knew you just you just know. You know, I didn't have a conversation with the writers before I got the script, but I just remember specifically sitting down with that script, going, "Okay, where is it? Where is it?" You know, you just you know it's coming. It's like um, I don't know. It's like it's like Walking Dead, Game of Thrones. You just never know when you're going to be knocked off, and. Um, I know it's been in print a hundred times before, but I just, I didn't like the way they took Rachel out. So they did rewrite it for me. So it wasn't, you know, they originally had her, so she got scissors down her throat. And I was like, no, that's not. <laughs> 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 and I don't think that that's Rachel Carruthers either. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, that was a little too undignified for her. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't love it. But no, of course it wasn't my, my choice, but then. You know, at the same time, I was really, I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but I was really grateful to have gotten through a whole film without getting killed in that series. I mean, that says a lot about her character and, and Danielle's too. It's like, you know, they had staying power more than, more than most, so I was lucky. Oh, yeah, it doesn't happen that often in Halloween or really any movie franchise in general. That's right, and I had the, the absolute pleasure and privilege of, of getting to work with Donald Pleasance, which oh, I don't know, you can't you can't beat that. I mean, it just it was tremendous. Yeah, really, yeah. really good fun, and a great director and a great script. You know, we were lucky. I was about to say you were you were very lucky. A lot of people are very envious that you were able to work with them when you did. And and we got along really well. Sasha, Kathleen, you know, both star. Um, I don't know, it just, Danielle, I mean, it, it was really a fantastic experience from, from start to finish. We worked really, really hard, but um, it was fantastic. After, um, after Halloween, you did a couple other things, and then you joined a new franchise that is pretty popular as well, which is the House of the Dead um, franchise, and that movie seemed to be a lot more... Um, Fun. I don't want to say silly, but it seemed to be a lot more fun than <laughs> Halloween. Well, I think that Uber Ball had a very different take on. He had a very specific vision of how he wanted um, a video game to be translated into film, and that was by you know cutting in bits of, of the video game through the film. Um, the cool thing about House of the Dead for me personally was uh, I really liked my character. Again, she was really tough. She was a fighter. Um, I got to um, shoot some really big guns, the Mossberg 500 <laughs> with incendiary shells was really, really fun. And it's, um, I got trained by this guy that was trained with the Israeli army. Um, the whole turntable shots where, I mean, imagine being up on a platform, the camera is spinning around, you know, we're, I'm spinning at three, you know, the 360 degree turns and the camera is filming the whole thing. I just, some really cool <laughs> stuff happened during that shoot and we shot it up in the backwoods outside of Vancouver and they built this fantastic um, house for the duration of the shoot. The, it was so so cool and of course once we finished they detonated it and you know, it, to be privy to all that special effects and all that production value was was a really cool experience from my perspective. And it was all night shoots. You know, we'd hear the birds tripping, the sun would come up, and we'd wrap. And then we'd have to sleep all day and come back, you know, the following night. So, it was oh, exciting. Yeah. That movie was <laughs> mostly all at night, yeah. And I'm just, in, I'm just impressed that you remembered what kind of gun you got to play with, even, like, down to the shells and everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was really... And it's, it's weird that... To, you don't think about it at the time, but it didn't occur to me that I have to, you know, they're, they're very, very, they take, in all the things I've ever done, they're extremely, um, they take uh, having weapons on the set very seriously, and for good reason, but right. in terms of, like, you have to wear ear protection, you know, mm -hmm. things like that, so you have to hit your cue, you have to hear your lines, you know, it's, it's, it's a different experience when you can't hear a thing and to, and to play the scene. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, and it was like playing a zombie in uh, All Souls Day. Oh, yes. Right, 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 right. All Souls Day, a dia de la muertos. Um, I had um, contacts in my eyes that completely blinded me. So, again, I'm playing a scene with no vision. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. 
and that was fun. That was it's so much. Um, I don't think Greg Nicotero worked on that one, but the prosthetics guys are so talented on these films. I mean, people may not realize how much work goes into all that stuff, the time, the, the expertise. Um, yeah, it was really, really cool. And it's funny because I had to, I woke up the next morning, my agent called and said, you need to be um, at a final callback for um, a lead in the drama. And so I had, you know, I came in that morning with, with about three hours sleep with gray makeup in my knuckles from being a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. Uh, yeah, all good stuff. Still a good zombie flick. I own it on DVD. Is that true? I do. I do own it on DVD. I saw it on Sci-Fi like three times and I bought it. And I'll tell you who is the biggest pleasure to work with up at the very top is Danny Trano. Yes, I've heard that. What a good egg that man is. Just a heart, a heart of gold. I don't want to make a whole interview about like you dying in movies, but I, I never saw House of the Dead 2, but it says that you... Casper is actually back in House of the Dead too, but I remember you getting yeah, and that's that's movie magic. People are like, how could you not die? Well, you know the the zombies hacked my legs off in one, and miraculously um, in House of the Dead two, I'm in a wheelchair. So luckily we did not get to, um, or I didn't get to House of the Dead three, so we don't know what happened to her in the wheelchair. But <laughs> yes, I live I lived through the leg hacking. So I did not know magic. that. <laughs> That whole thing was so fun. On, on House of the Dead, you know, um, once my legs get hacked off, um, you know, working with a green screen, and I had to wear these pres <laughs> sorry, these prosthetic shorts called meat shorts, they call them. <laughs> and that's to make it look like your legs are hacked off. Anyway. Meat shorts. <laughs> yeah, right? I know. Isn't that great? I'm learning. Anyway. I'm just learning so much from this interview. Um, I know. I know. All the movie secrets. Yes, right? Um, after House of the Dead, you also did Room 6, you did The Thirst, you did Dead and Deader, but some of these um, you actually worked on as your production company, Mindfire Entertainment, which you co-founded with your husband, Mark Gottwald. What can you tell me uh, about starting up that whole business? Um, we started with a, with a really fantastic um, comedy that uh, Mark Altman and Robert Burnett wrote and sent to us um, called Free Enterprise. And we got, um, they got William Shatner on board, which was just tremendous. Our first film out of the gate to have him have his involvement. Um, he was so much fun and such a consummate professional. Um, yeah, Mindfire, gosh, they made a, made a whole slew of films and then they got strictly into um, producing things for other people, and that spun into um, the Three Amigos. So it's taken on different different titles as a production company, but um, they're they always have things up their sleeve. And um, the last thing they worked on was a show for Cinemax called Femme Fatale that played on Friday nights. Right. Great, great production value, and I think it's still running on some stations. And uh, we'll see what happens next. But it started with Free Enterprise, which was um, a comedy. Um, that we shot right smack in the middle of uh, El Nino in like the late, let's do the late 90s. Great, great experience. Super smart and super funny. Do you think there's... With, uh, with, with James Gunn, I just saw uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. How great is that? I actually didn't see that yet. I interviewed a oh, couple of people, so but I didn't... Oh, good. It is so good. What a talent. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> do you guys do... Uh... <laughs> I really, I really wasn't to like it as much as I did, but oh, God, it's entertaining. It's really, really great. I mean, it looks good for, like, the visual effects and everything, and I heard the acting is really well done as well. The acting is great, and it's the writing. It's really, it's like, it's like James Gunn knows how intelligent his audience is. You know what I mean? He doesn't, mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't dumb it, dumb it down, which is always, always refreshing, you know? Yeah. Do, uh, do you and Mindfire Entertainment have any upcoming films, maybe, that you could tell me about? Uh, they have stuff up their sleeve. I'm not as involved in that because I'm spinning off and doing stuff of my own. Okay. Um, but yes, they always have they always have goodies up their sleeves. You'll have to wait and see. All right, but I know you are currently doing a play that you are actually starting tomorrow. 
Can you I'm tell? I'm doing a play. Um, it's tomorrow. It's one performance, and it's called a bootleg, which means um, it's Shakespeare. It's a bootleg production of a Shakespeare play, and that means I've never learned this before. You have 30 days to learn your lines once you're given the part. Um, we did a line through the other night, and then you. We have one day of rehearsal, which is tomorrow. So we'll rehearse for 12 hours, and we put it up tomorrow night for a live audience. So it's super, super scary and super fun. Like you're kind of flying by the seat of your pants. But um, they're really, really popular, and it's great as an actor. It's like, you know, you work you work out different muscles. So I'm really looking forward to it. But it's just one performance. It, it, it sounds like it's scary for you in like a whole new term of scary. Yeah, I love, love doing theater. That's how I started, and that's really... Um, it's it's really a different it's a, it's a totally different experience than working on films and television. Um, and it's definitely possible. I and mean, there's nothing like having a live audience right there. You can't you can't run an eye. That's for sure. Oh no, not at all. Um, do you know where the play is being held offhand so that anyone who listens to this maybe can go check it out? Um, I would tell you, but I know for a fact that it's sold out. Oh, okay. But it's a benefit, but um, oh, okay. uh, I'm sure there will be more theater in my in my future, and hopefully, 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 more more work in general. Yes, I know. There's a lot of people waiting and anticipating <laughs> new work from you, myself included. Well, I'm actually like really giddy now that we had this interview. I'm just like I'm so happy that I got a chance to talk to you today. It's always a pleasure to talk about Halloween 4. I mean, we're all still really, you know, I talked to Kathleen yesterday. And we, You know, we just text back and forth, happy Halloween. I don't know. It, it, it reminds me of, um, you just know it's a good experience when you stay in touch with people. And, and um, it doesn't happen often, but it's funny because Danielle and I actually have run into together, into each other at the, at the strangest times, like in the middle of a giant Lakers, Lakers game, <laughs> sitting out front. She happened to pass right by me. I mean, what are the chances? So, for whatever reason, our paths continue to cross. Um, I saw Dwight Little recently. It was such a pleasure. Um, you know, it's we're lucky that we still adore each other after all these years, and it's it's a real testament to how well run that that set was, and what a tremendous honor it was to work with um, Mustafa Akkad, who was just gentle and lovely and wonderful so and great yeah so it sounds like it's like a, a nice little horror family it is it is and um and it's fun to kind of see how it's growing and changing and shifting around and you know rob zombie is taking the reins and you know it, it doesn't stay the same um but for the for the small part that i had in it i'm really grateful because i i think we we got we got something good out of it you know even if it was uh, on the small scale, it was a gr it's a great, very popular franchise, and um, people are so respectful of it, you know? Yeah. But, I don't know. It's one of those things that, um, that continues to, to make people en enjoy the holiday, you know? It's, it's um, I don't know. We're really proud of it, I guess. Yeah, you can't have Halloween the holiday without Halloween the movies. Yeah, and they still play the heck out of it. So, so that's a testament to, um, you know, the can't be good fun that it is. Yes. Um, I'm going to let you go because I know you squeezed me into your schedule today and I, I really, really appreciate you taking the time to have this little interview with me today. It was just... My pleasure. What are you going to go as tonight, if I may ask? I'm not going to go as anything. I mean, for me, it's like, it's work and I don't... Because I, I know like a little special effects, like I'm teaching myself stuff and I actually did it in a movie, an independent film. But I mean, I don't foresee myself doing like all this zombie effects on myself and then just standing at a customer service desk for like <laughs> for seven hours you know yeah no i know what you mean all right mr michael have a very very happy halloween stay safe don't get too crazy on it <laughs> you too i will uh i will email you the interview when i have it posted awesome thank you so much take good care you too happy halloween okay thank you bye bye